Hello there, this is A.D. Robles, and you're listening to A.D. on the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. All right, let's jump right into it today. I have a bit of a grab bag episode today. have got a few different topics that I'm hoping to cover, uh, but I do want to start off with... Um, Apparently, a lot of people really, really want me to comment on this, and I, I really don't get it, but uh, that's that's okay. Um, I've received more than a handful of uh, private messages, some public as well, that are very accusatory. There, it's a very accusatory question where it'll be something like, are you going to comment on John MacArthur, or are you going to be just like everybody else who's not commenting on it, a total hypocrite? Like, you know, so it's like a question, but it's also an accusation. Um And, uh, you know, when I first started getting these messages, I didn't even know there was a controversy, right? Because I don't, contrary to popular belief, I don't spend my time, you know, trying to find drama for just every Christian I can think of. I'm I'm a one-trick pony, right? I'm a a one-trick pony. So I've got, you know, you know, social justice, and it's kind of morphed a little bit into not just social justice, but basically anything that the, you know, evangelical machine is putting forward, right? Any, any, anyone that's associated with, like, the main uh, evangelical organizations, the ones that are, you know, pushing propaganda for the U.S. government, that's kind of my shtick now. So it's like, I'm a one-trick pony. It's not a drama channel. This is not like Ruslan's channel where he talks about all things spirituality, tries to be like an internet pastor kind of thing. Um, that's not what this channel is. I'm, it's, again, one trick pony here. So, um, you know, I didn't know anything about it. Um, and so, you know, I did look into it a little bit, and uh, I do want to make one quick comment uh, about it, because I-, I said this the last time something like this kind of happened, because lo- the last time people were trying to get my opinion on something like this, it was about Ravi Zacharias. And I put out a video that had Ravi's name in the title, but basically the video said, I'm not going to comment on this. And uh, because, you know, I don't, I don't know. And Ravi's not here to defend himself. And like, it looks bad. That's what I said at the time. I said, it looks bad. Um, anyway, so, but, and, and this also, likewise, it looks bad, this John MacArthur stuff. Uh, but when I started reading about it, it really struck me that like a lot, a lot of the details here uh, make a huge difference, right? Because, you know, the way the story goes, at least as far as I understand it, it's a little convoluted, I'm not going to lie. But the way the story goes is that there was a family at his church, and um, there were some accusations flying of, of, of abuse. Um, and then, you know, like, then later it came out that um, it was, like, beyond what was said at the time. It was, like, sexual abuse and stuff like that. And I guess the guy went to prison for it. By the way, uh, he shouldn't go to prison for it. He should be executed for sexually assaulting children. Anyway, so all, all that to say, so at, at one point, I guess, that they had excommunicated her or church disciplined her because as far as, as they knew, she was just refusing to be reconciled to her husband. Um, and what, to me, it's like, okay, well, so am I to believe, based on this reporting, that they knew that this man was sexually abusing his kids, and they still said, oh, you've got to reconcile it with your husband. Um, is that possible? I mean, I suppose anything's possible, but I highly doubt that that's actually what happened. I have a feeling that what, what likely happened is, given the information that they had, you know, they did what they thought was the right thing, uh, and then more information, more evil information came out later, which if they had, in hindsight, they probably wouldn't have done what they had done. Um, so, you know, the details make a huge difference, and the timeline makes a huge difference uh, based on a story like that. Um, and maybe, maybe, maybe the way I'm presenting it isn't the way it actually is. But, but the point is, though, that, that all the details make a big difference. And so, you know, you have to consider all th- these details and also consider the fact that you don't have the details. Um, and so, you know, and, and people ask me about Doug, you know, something that happened at Doug's church as well. And again, I don't know the details. So it's like, how can I make a decision on all of this? Now, I, I do know that if, um, if the, the elders at, at uh, Grace Community Church knew about the sexual abuse and did not report it or 
or chose not to report it and then excommunicated the wife that was enduring this sexual abuse and stuff like that. Um, I have no qualms saying that's pure evil. They should be, um, they should be, you know, tried and charged and, and at full extent of the law kind of thing. Uh, I highly doubt that's what's happened. So, um, you know, that's pretty much my comment. I mean, it, 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 it doesn't look good at all to me. Um, but again, I don't know all the details and I don't know if I'll ever know all the details. So, um, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not ready to accept the, the narrative that, well, they just, they just tell women to put up with the, with pedophiles, right? Like they don't even care about pedophiles. I, I just refuse to believe that, um, in, in any stretch of the imagination. And that's ridiculous, obviously, um, but my question to to all of these these people that that are that are trying to come hard against MacArthur is how come you play footsies with pedophiles, right? Why why do you tolerate pedophiles? You know, and and, and I'm not talking like hypothetically. What I'm talking about is most of you guys don't believe we should execute pedophiles. Why not? And there you go. In any case, um, <clears throat> so. Speaking of not being able to figure out what's what's the information really is, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, how do I how do I manage the propaganda, right? Like, because obviously I don't know everything. I don't know what's really going on, you know, in Ukraine. I don't know what's going on in you know certain situations and stuff like that. And it's very hard to know because the reality is that 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 the the information is weaponized at every turn, and it's not. This is nothing new. This has been happening for a long time. But these days, it's just so apparent that information has been weaponized. Um, the media lies. The media stretches the truth. The media's narratives are completely upside down to reality. And um, so how do I cut through all the, the nonsense is, is, is kind of what people ask me. And the one thing I will caution people is that once you start waking up to the fact that the media is flat out lying to you all the time, I think the temptation is to be very reflexive about it where it's like, Okay, so I'm going to believe the opposite of what the media says. Now, if I had to choose between believing everything the media says and believing the opposite of the media says, I would choose the opposite, right? I think you're much more likely to be closer to the truth if you believe the opposite of what the media says. But I don't think that's a hard and fast rule. We've got to be careful with that because I think um, that can be a, a, a useful tool for the powers that be as well to just get you to always believe the opposite of what they say. It's just too predictable. And what I think is the, the best thing that you can do, and this is kind of what I do uh, and all of that, is um, <clears throat> I try to read, I try, I try to, I try to I, 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 if there's something I want to know about, like the Ukraine situation, I try to get propaganda from all sides, right? I get the American propaganda, I get the Russian propaganda, I get the Ukrainian propaganda, you know, whatever it is, you know, Al Jazeera, whatever it is. And what I find is that regularly some of the basic facts are the same. And so it's like the basic facts, you know, a lot of times are correct, but it's the story that's that's all jacked up, right? Like the Russians will admit some of the basic facts of what's going on in, in Ukraine, and Ukraine will do that as well. But the story is what's different. So, you know, the basic facts. Okay, well, there's a lot of Russian soldiers dying in Ukraine, right? And Ukraine's like, it's just 100,000, and we are fighting victoriously. I don't even know why I use that accent, right? And so, like, you know that part's a lie where it's like it's 100,000 soldiers, and we're, we're destroying them. We're defeating them at every turn. Like, that's the story. You know, and then Russia's like, well, like, 10 soldiers died. And it's like, well, you know that's a lie too. But, but the fact is there are people dying in Russia, uh, in Ukraine, due to the Russian invasion of, uh, of Ukraine. So it's like you know, basic facts, right? So you get that, and you just got to filter out those stories, right? Like the stories, don't get too wrapped up in the stories because the stories are where they try to rob you of your reason. They try to rob you of your logic. They try to, they try to get you to feel emotional about things. Like, like emotions are fine, but don't be ruled by them. You know what I mean? Like there's no reason to be flying the flag of a foreign nation right now, regardless of what the nation is. So that's kind of how I do it. You know, the, the it's not perfect because you don't end up really knowing if, oh my goodness, oh, there you go. You don't really end up knowing what the actual truth is. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, you don't really need to know. I mean, that's, that's this is halfway around the world. Like, um, for someone that lives in the United States, to be honest, like n knowing the specific details of everything that's going on in Ukraine is not necessary. 
it's not necessary. You just have to know some basic facts. And and you know another like basic fact is that um, you know the the the, the the powers that be, like the World Economic Forum, the Great Reset, you know, the Western sort of cabal of of, of evil leadership, they're all on one side, and uh, they happen to be all on one side of every awful issue, you know? They're all pro-abortion, they're all pro-critical race theory, they're all pro all the, like all this evil stuff, and they also are all pro-Ukraine. It's like, yeah, that's that's important information, to have, right? And it's also, it's important information to know that, well, you know, Russia was kind of part of that stuff as well. They're part of the same club, although they seem to be, you know, you know playing their part in rebelling against that club a little bit. So that's a, that's a good thing. So in any case, so again, ba- basic facts are usually just as long as you, you know, you, t- you take, as long as you understand you're watching propaganda, no matter what kind of propaganda it is, it's either American propaganda or Russian propaganda or, you know, Middle Eastern propaganda, whatever. It's all propaganda. Um, but you can get to sort of like a basic sort of it's like the minimal facts approach, right? It's like it's a minimal facts approach for the news. The other thing to consider, too, is ch- see what side is banning information from you. Because the people that actually start censoring and they're, they're aggressive about it and they start trying to cancel an entire nation uh, and, and you know, they, they don't let you see information from, from Russia today or whatever it is, like usually the people that start engaging in censorship and banning are the ones you need to worry about the most. And by the way, this keeps the door open because like, the, the good guys reg- don't, don't usually do this, right? Because like, the thing is, with your children, right, you, you censor certain information from your children you know, when you're an adult, right? Because you know, they can't handle it. They're kids. You know, they don't understand uh, a lot of the nuances of the world. And over time, as they grow up, you censor much less. Over time, you censor less and less and less. And eventually, they're an adult, and you don't have to censor anything anymore. I mean, it'd be weird for my father to censor, like, uh, you know, telling me about a situation and he, he censors some of the violence or some of the, the sexuality or something like that in a story he's telling me. Like, that'd be weird because I'm like 40 now, you know? Um, but when, he, when, I'm, when I was four, he wouldn't tell me everything. Just like I don't tell my kids everything that's going on. I'll, I'll tell them, you know, certain things, but, but certain things I just, they just don't need to know yet. They're not, their brains aren't ready for it yet. Um, but so when the government treats you like a kid and they start saying, well, you, you're too stupid, you can't handle ha- listening to Russia today, that, that's what you have to worry about. By the way, Russia's not innocent in this. They censor information too. So, but, the, but the point is, though, that you don't have to worry about the information Russia's censoring to their Russian people. You're not Russian. Well, maybe you're not. But if you're in the United States, um, the ones you have to worry about are the ones that are censoring information for you. Right. That's and I, when I say worry, I don't mean like, you know, oh, my goodness, like kind of way. But but those are the people that are likely not uh, on your side. Those are the people that are likely wish you ill will. Um, and so, again, another reason to be minding your own business, minding your own affairs like it should be it should matter more to you, at least in my opinion, um, what Jerome Powell lies he spins up at any moment um, to you than what lies uh, Zelensky's telling. Or what lies, you know, Vladimir Putin is telling. Like, like though, yeah, the Russians need to worry about Putin's lies. You worry about Jerome Powell's lies. You worry about Joe Biden's lies. And again, I don't mean worry like full of anxiety and angst. I mean concern yourself with. So that's that's kind of that's kind of how I deal deal, th- deal with things. I don't know exactly. And, and and the thing is, at the end of the day, I still don't know what's going on 100 percent in Ukraine. Um, but that's why I don't make big pronouncements about it. You know what I mean? I, don't think Russia should have invaded a, a, a sovereign country, but that's about all I'm willing to say. And I'm not sending any aid to, to, to Ukraine for, that, for the war effort, right? I'm sending aid over to people, that, Christians that I trust, that are housing refugees, because that's the work uh, that I think the church should be engaging in. So in any case, let's move on to the next topic, which is how warm my heart has been the last few days. That's right. My... A.D. Robles is a big old softy, you know. His heart has been warmed just so much. And what I mean is I just see so many people. Maybe it's just because I'm on Gab and I just get a weird sample size size or, or sample audience. But, man, I get, I see so, I've seen so many people over the last few weeks that are starting gardens, that are starting to raise chickens. Oh, man, Grant Van Brimmer, he's, uh, he's a, a minister in the CREC. He sent me a picture of, he, I guess his family bought some, some chicks, 
Um, and you know he's starting to you know get you know he's starting to you know get some pr- production out of his land and he's he's raising chickens and man that that warms my heart man I was giving a little like you know newbie advice and stuff like that he might get some more chickens I think he bought like eight of them he might get a few more he's thinking about what kind of coop to build and it, it is awesome and 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 my chickens have started laying again like they, they've really slowed down this winter but uh, man they're they're almost back in full swing already man what a, what an amazing thing you just go outside and I, I tell you man it is like it is like magic it is like magic you you go out there and there's just eggs there's just food there now for you and it's just wonderful man people are getting it people are getting it people are understanding that the way out of this chaos the way out of this system that is just is just I don't know what they're planning. Have you seen some of this information coming about coming out about the World Economic Forum and the transhumanism stuff and how they're trying to hack brains and 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 turn men into gods? Like it is it is spiritual at the highest levels, it, counterfeit spiritual. Um, but these people are 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 twisted. I mean, this is this is this is Satan's army. That's what it is. And so people are realizing, you know, if I don't want to participate in that. I have to say just no, but I also have to build up my own stuff so that I have, you know, a way to eat and a way to protect myself and a way to live that does not rely on any of these go- these companies, these 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 politicians and and, and you got to start simple, man. It starts with one egg, right? It starts with one chicken. It starts with one, you know, plot of land and things like that. People are getting it, man, and it it warms my heart to see this. I saw this uh, on on Twitter the other day. John, well, actually, I saw it on on Gab, and then I went to Twitter, and I saw it. and And people are getting this, man. It's like they're seeing through what 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 we've been sold for at this point for decades, right? And so, this is Dave Rubin and um, another man who they, I guess they pretend to be married, and I guess they've uh, done some in vitro something or other, and they're gonna have children which that's even even just the language around this i just they're not going to have children they're going to they're going to they bought some children is what they did they bought some children and i guess one of them is being born in october the next one a few months later and so these two men these two these two homosexuals are going to raise two children and um you know dave rubin is he's a liberal but then he became kind of like a, a darling for the anti you know critical race theory type people anti great reset and so a lot of conservatives ended up kind of claiming him as their own i don't know if does he does he i don't even know if he self identifies as a conservative i have no idea i don't care i don't care i mean i've watched one episode of dave rubin and it was the one where he had uh, larry elder on which was a hilarious episode cuz larry kind of yells at him a little bit i i i, I like that episode it was good anyway so he does this this you know baby birth announcement. And he tries to be all cutesy about it, and then it's like the wall is just like every conservative, like official conservative outlet is like, oh congrats, this is wonderful, and oh you're never gonna, you're not gonna get any sleep about it. It's like and the Prager U was doing it, Blaze, I mean, Megan McCain. I mean that's not really that conservative, but like you know lots of guys were just like, and and and, and people are getting it. People saw right through this, and 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 in the past like. I don't think we saw this grift uh, that easily. Now we're starting to all see it, and it's like, what's the what's what's the value in being conservative if you're not conserving anything? Like this is not something to be celebrated. This is actually something that is a shame. This is this is uh, this is going to be part of the reasons why our nation is going to continue to be cursed. This is why we're being destroyed right now. This is why we're being destroyed. Not just this, but this is part of it. Two, 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 two gay guys that are pr- playing house together shouldn't be able to buy kids. And this is just, this is obvious. But this is what's happening, and, and, and conservatives are all about it. And, and so my brother, my brother told me, he's like, you know, this, this just proves that, that, you know, Prager U and you know, the Blaze and, and all these organizations that are like, they're, they're anti, you know, the anti-white critical race theory stuff right now. But in 10 years, they're going to be all about it. In 10, in maybe even less time. They're going to be all about it because they're just constantly being dragged leftward, dragged and dragged. This is the same thing that's happening with PragerU happened to Gospel Coalition. The same thing that's happening to Blaze happened to Gospel Coalition. Like, Gospel Coalition is not 
it's not fixed to anything, right? There's no foundation there. It's just they're being pulled along by the winds of, of, of change here in the United States, and, and, they're, and they're, they're proud of it. They're, 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 they're not hiding it in any way. Here's, here's John Stark. John Stark is uh, uh, an evangelical sort of, you know, progressive Christian darling who still, you know, you know, preaches a gospel that's legitimate, but he's very progressive in almost every way. And here he is putting forward, he's putting forward a proposal. Here's the proposal. So he's talking about Christian deconstruction, which is a euphemism for leaving the faith, right? So all the all the meat of the faith, you're leaving that behind. You know, oh, you know, that's that's just that's just whiteness. That's why whiteness, whiteness is wicked. So here's John Stark's they're not they're not they're not ashamed of this. They're proud of this. They wear this as a badge of honor. I've been to this church apostles that that he pastors now. And and it at one point it was a legitimate church. Who knows what it is now? I haven't been there recently. Anyway, here's what John Stark says. The things we are calling deconstruction might actually be what Richard Lovelace called disenculturalization. What he meant was removing the cultural idolatry, idolatry, conservative or progressive, from your faith. So he's basically saying leaving the faith actually isn't leaving the faith at all. Here's my proposal. When people leave the faith, call it um, more authentic faith. And actually, that is what a lot of these people call it. They say, I'm, I'm discovering a more authentic faith, faith that doesn't require anything of me. That doesn't require anything of me besides what socialists require of me. So if my faith requires something that a commie requires of me, then that's authentic faith. If it requires anything else, then it's not authentic faith. That's, that's, that's idolatry, right? And, of course, he tries to pretend like he's against progressive uh, idolatry in the faith. That's not true at all. This is, this is all a smokescreen. They always do this. He's not, there's no third way here. This is progressivism, and he's very proud of that. And so people are getting it, though. And that's my point. People are getting it, and it warms my heart so much. The amount of people that I see starting families, having a lot of kids, starting little mini farms, uh, you know, things like that, starting businesses, all of that, it'll, it puts you in a position where when somebody – like this is, this, is, this is what warms my heart about it. When, um, when, 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 when the homosexual couple makes the, uh, the birth announcement, the, the fake birth announcement for the kids that they bought um, – in the old days, it would have been tempting to do what Blaze did, to do what PragerU did, right? Oh, congratulations! Even if you knew better, you're like, congratulations! Because you have to participate in all these systems, and you don't want to get kicked off of them. These days, we're building our own stuff now. We're starting families. We're starting businesses. We're starting farms. We've got our own thing going on. We're going to become our own central bank. So don't worry about it, right? Nowadays, it, it, see, when, 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 when you're, when you're um, coerced into doing something, right, um, against your will, and you have no choice, like a lot of people with the vaccine, they had to get the vaccine because they were going to lose their jobs, and they did not have anything to fall back on. They had no business. They had no savings, whatever it was. And so they reluctantly got the vaccine. It's the same thing with this stuff. When LinkedIn says you have to put your pronouns in your bio, otherwise you got to stop using our profile, it's a joke when you've prepared for this kind of stuff. When you've got a, an alternative, when you've got uh, savings and, and, and protection um, and stuff like that, when you've planned ahead, in other words, when you've obeyed the Proverbs, saw trouble coming, and planned ahead and hid yourself from it, this is all a joke. You don't have to do what PragerU did. You see, PragerU bows the knee because if they didn't have Twitter, if they didn't have YouTube, they didn't have all this stuff, um, they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't exist, right? Now, PragerU might have gotten kicked off YouTube. I don't, I don't remember. Who knows? But the point is, they're doing this because they, fe they, they feel like they have to do this. They have to kiss the ring, right, in order to survive. But you see, Christians can't put themselves in that position. Christians see the trouble coming. This is what the proverb says. A righteous man, a wise man, sees trouble coming and hides himself from it. That means plan ahead. That means protect yourself because there is trouble coming. Don't put yourself in the position to have to kiss the ring of the homosexual couple because you don't want to ruin your family's situation. You, we have to, we have to, we get it now. I think we, a lot of us are, are getting this now. Don't ever be tempted like this. The, the, the reality is you don't have to kiss the ring. The reality is that God will protect you. God is the strong tower, right? And so uh, let's not tempt God in this sense, like we're not going to plan or prepare. Uh, so you're, you're going to be my strong tower, so I'm not going to do anything to protect myself. Don't tempt God in that way. Don't test him like that. Instead, obey him 
and say, God, I'm going to prepare for this situation because one day this is coming to my office where I'm going to have to kiss their ring in order to keep my job. And I want to be I want to be in a situation where when they tell me to do that, I laugh in their face, chuck the paper back in their face and say, have a nice life. Go ahead and fire me if you want to. That's that's what I, that's the position I want to be in. Um, and so everyone's on a different aspect of that journey. And I hope this makes sense. I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. But um, but yeah, so so guys, I love you. God bless you. The Proverbs, man. If you want a manual on how to deal with stuff right now, the Proverbs. And by the way, my speech is coming out very soon where I talk about this kind of thing in more detail. God bless you. I hope you found this podcast helpful. Don't forget to tune in next week on Thursday for AD on the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network.